Redeemer Church is profoundly convicted and determined to see every believer in our scope become healthy and active disciples to the glory of God. We desire to see every disciple thriving spiritually in all areas of our lives, being sent out as disciples to make disciples, starting in Lubbock all the way to the ends of the earth. Good morning, Redeemer. My name's Keenan Harris, and I just want to welcome you to our Redeemer online worship services, and we want to thank you for tuning in. That if this is one of your first times tuning in, or maybe you've been watching for the last few weeks, here at Redeemer, we desire to be a gospel-centered missional family of disciples making disciples, and it's our hope that you would find family here, that you would find Redeemer to be a place, not just that you attend or tune in online, but a place where you belong. And so we want to connect with you. We want to get to know you you and answer any questions you have about us uh, or any questions that you might have about Jesus. And so we'd love to hear from you. So if you would text Sunday to 94090 and fill out that form, that'll give us your contact information. We want to follow up with you, hear your story, and answer those questions. Or maybe uniquely in this time, you just need prayer, that you need people to come around you and partner with you in prayer and taking your needs and your requests to the Lord. We would be honored to do that. If you would text CARE to 94090, it would be our honor to pray with you. And so it's our hope that as we come before the Lord, that even if, again, even though we're having to do this uh, virtually or online, um, that we are still worshiping the creator of the universe. We're still worshiping the God who sent his one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. And he rose Jesus from the grave so that we could have hope and so that we could have purpose. And so we are worshiping our resurrected savior this morning, even if it's on a TV screen or on a cell phone. And so my encouragement is as I read this call to worship over us, and then as I pray that you would use this time um, to just pause before the Lord and focus your mind and your heart on what he would have for us this morning. And so our call to worship comes from Psalm 33 verses 4 and 5 and it says this, For the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Let's pray. God, we come before you and we thank you that your word is upright. That we come before you this morning, we're about to hear uh, from the word of God. We're about to hear you speak to us. And God, we declare and we believe that it is upright and it is true. And all you do, God, you are faithful. And so God, what an incredible reminder, what an incredible truth for me is that you are faithful even when I am faithless, even when I struggle, God, you are faithful to me. So God, thank you for that. And I pray that you would focus our minds, you would focus our hearts on what you would have for us this morning. Bring conviction um, and create worship in our hearts for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. together that the gospel gives us a new life. Let's declare these things. We know these are true. That there's a reason why the curse of sin is broken. There's a reason why the darkness runs from the light. Yes, there's a reason why we stand here now for I'm not overtaken There's a reason why we sing on through the night There's a reason why our hope remains eternal Jesus is
share his resurrection Jesus is alive Oh, he's alive Praise the King For he is risen Praise the King He's alive Praise the King Yes, death's dead Oh, oh. 
So before we get into the sermon, we have a video that we want to show you that this is Senior Recognition Sunday here at Redeemer. And of course, this is not like we had originally envisioned a couple months ago. And of course, it's not like you had envisioned. But um, we value our students here at Redeemer. We value our college students. We value our middle school and high school students. And we want to recognize them that graduating seniors that we're so grateful for the time that you've invested here during your time here at college and we love our college students here what a gift our college students here are here at Redeemer and our college ministry our church has a desire to take college freshmen and all the way through till their senior year that we want to create in them a desire and send them out to either be missionaries or to go on a church plant or to just be sent out as healthy and active all-in church members either here at Redeemer Redeemer or at other churches and we want to send out this graduating class to do that. Dusty's going to talk about in his sermon that we are a sent people and so graduating seniors from college that you're being sent out and we hope and pray that as you're leaving this place or maybe you're staying but that you would take this step of faith to be all in church members and to be used for the glory of God and we are so grateful and we celebrate with you this this achievement that you are experiencing right now and then our graduating seniors this one in high school this one uh, hits me a little bit personally I've gotten the opportunity to work in youth ministry here for a little over four years and I love these students and what a lot of fun we've had and what a joy they are and again you're not you're you're wrapping up your senior year in a way that you had not originally envisioned, but God's not surprised by it. And so my, it's my hope that as you're going to college or as you're graduating from high school, you're stepping into a, a huge season of your life. And we want to send you out. We're, I'm so grateful for the time that you've spent here with your family. And we love you. We love you graduating seniors from high school. We love you graduating seniors from college. And we want you to take this time to watch this video. Hi everyone, my name is Grace Ann Tipton and I am a mechanical engineering major at Texas Tech right now and I'm a senior so I'll be graduating in May of 2020. Whenever I was asked what Redeemer has meant to me, I really couldn't come up with one thing because it's really been the backbone of my college experience. Um, the community at Redeemer has just been unparalleled and it's presented the opportunity for me to grow so much more in my faith in these past four years than I ever have in my life. Starting with GC, I really just got to experience really what Christian friendships looked like and how important that is and how life-giving that is. Secondly, I've been mentored by various people throughout Redeemer and I'm currently in a grow group as well. Just learning about confession and sanctification and really how to deeply abide in the Lord. And then lastly, I got to participate in DMT this past spring, which stands for Disciple Making Teams. We learn disciplines of evangel evangelization, and um, I just got to go throughout Lubbock and share with people. And I got to learn my distinct role in the Great Commission because God has a huge heart for reaching the nations, and I could potentially be involved in His plan. So overall, I'm just so thankful for the community that Redeemer has provided, and um, this may not be the end of my journey as I might continue to do launch community. Hi, my name is Parker Lepetska. I'm a high school student at Monterey High School. After graduation, a few weeks, I will be attending the University of Arkansas where I'll be studying engineering. So Redeemer throughout my high school career has done a lot for me. Um, they have, their youth groups have helped me and my friends just grow and learn more about God. Um, also, the grow groups um, have been very beneficial to me. That's actually where I came to know Christ. Um, and just through the church services and all the opportun other opportunities that Redeemer has offered, um, I've just grown and sanctified so much more. Um, and so, 
I think I, I owe Redeemer a big thank you because of all the opportunities and just the personal experience they have offered me. Um, they have truly been a big part of bringing myself from death to life. And so um, I just owe them a big thank you. So today we'll be reading from Mark chapter 6 verses 7 through 13. And he called the twelve, and began to send them out two by two. And he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and will not listen to you. When you leave, shake off your dust that's on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. All right, appreciate that. I uh, love our seniors and great to hear the scripture being read by Parker. I've known Parker since he, I think he was eight, maybe even younger than that, as a baseball player. and. I'm really grateful for Grace Ann too, and I want to just acknowledge the the unique season this is for seniors. We are super bummed that you are not here in person in this in this facility. And I just what a strange uh, last chapter it's been for you. But how much of Redeemer's vision that we laid out during Worth It relates to uh, specifically to students that those that have grown up here at Redeemer, and that we want to uh, we want to equip you. And you heard a lot of equipping in both of their stories about learning to read the Bible and being discipled, and Parker even coming to faith that way and what a, play, a big part that has played for uh, Grace Ann. And um, also even the training in evangelism and in the sending out and how important college students are, both students that are currently here as well as we want to equip all of our little ones as they uh, leave the nest someday. And so um, how, how important all of these aspects are. Um, I just want to pray for our graduates for a moment. So join me in, uh, in praying for those that have had a very strange final chapter. So let's, uh, let's pray. Lord, for those... Uh, those graduates, Lord, we celebrate with them. We're, we're thankful for them. And also, Lord, we're trusting that you would fill up what they've lost and in the, the strange finish to it and the lack of connectivity with their friends that they've um, went to school with and you know, even be able to be uh, together with the church and a whole bunch of different things that surely are, are there and plenty of things to mourn and lament. Uh, Lord, we also ask that you would um, redeem it and the, the time that they are spending right now, that um, there'd be beautiful um, beautiful redemption even as they move forward and uh, that there'd be a deep sense of trust and hope that would fill every one of them, that all of our high school graduates, you would send them out and they'd be mighty men, mighty women of, um, of yours. And then for these uh, college graduates and people that are graduating from grad school and med school. Lord, we thank you for the season we've had with them, even for some that we'll get to continue to have here, and the rest that will go off and take jobs in other places that you would send them in your power and in your spirit. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we've uh, heard the scripture read by Parker, and we're going to be getting into Mark 6 here in just a minute. Now, what I want to uh, press into that I think is going to be very important to, um, to really highlight is that I think there's going to be two different ways that we misunderstand Christianity and the core message of it, whether you're a Christian or not. You're going to tend to latch on to perhaps only one aspect of what Jesus was about and to the exclusion of other ones, and, and maybe you don't value either one of them. And I'm really grateful that you're watching this. Perhaps you're not a Christian and you're very skeptical of the claims of the Bible. And um, it, regardless of where you are on that, this passage is going to help us to orient what God's priorities are uh, for us and for the world. So here's going to be the two things you're, we're going to tend to latch on to. One is that we're going to be tempted to think that God only cares about the spiritual part of us. And I, I would say that, uh, that most Bible-believing Christians that if there is going to be an error, are going to tend to fall into this one, which is not real sure what the grace of Jesus and Jesus' death and resurrection and what that does besides get us to heaven. And in the worst case of this, that that's what, um, that's what 
Jesus is all about, is getting you to heaven. You believe that and you kind of check that and then you uh, you just kind of move on and you try to figure out how to do the Christian life on your own from there. And that'd be the worst case of that is you're not really sure what the Christian life has to do and you're really not sure if God even really cares about what you're going through right now, whether it be all of the COVID stuff or other personal challenges you're facing, maybe depression, maybe uh, financially you're feeling some stress, maybe just frustrated, maybe uh, lonely. It could be a, whatever it is that you're dealing with that may even be intensified through the current climate we're in and wondering if God even cares about that. So that'd be one one side of, of an error where you think God only cares about the spiritual component. Even in the best case, you might say, well, I mean, I know that he does, uh, but but wondering if uh, wondering if God really cares uh, about something besides my spiritual growth and wondering if he cares about uh, the, the normal everyday things about what it means to be you. Okay, so that's one side. Now, the other part of it would be someone that would say that they think that uh, Christianity is really about doing doing good deeds, especially helping people with problems, you know, maybe doing a literacy training and helping uh, hungry people eat and uh, perhaps uh, you know, providing, uh, providing help for uh, orphans and foster children or, or things like that and saying, look, that's really what Christianity is all about. You'll often see this from people that maybe uh, feel like the Bible is not necessarily inspired by God and may not believe even in Jesus' death and resurrection as like historical realities and that Jesus is God in the flesh. But they may say, uh, well, look, the, the beliefs of Christianity aren't really important. What's important is that we do some of the, you know, the, the better parts that are in there in the Bible, like those kind of things, helping the poor, helping the needy, providing justice, so on and so forth. And say so that's really what Christianity is really about, that God cares about the physical needs. Now, what we're going to see in this passage right here, it's already been read, is you're going to see a pushback against that perspective because you're going to see that um, God's going to care about both of those things. And uh, we're going to uh, see that there's both going to be a physical and a spiritual element in this. Uh, just a quick note before we go back and, and look through some elements of this, that whenever Jesus sends these, uh, these apostles out, and he calls the, the 12, it says in verse 7, and began to send them out two by two, and he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. That's something that's interesting about the kind of ministry they're going to do, both in preaching and in, in caring for people physically with what they're going, for, uh, going through, is that Jesus did all of the things he's going to send these people out to do, from you know casting out demons to healing people that were sick to preaching the good news of the kingdom and uh, in this message of repentance and preparation for uh, what Jesus would do in his death and resurrection. That message, would, of course, would shift for the apostles after Jesus' death and resurrection. It would all be about that. But right now it's, hey, look, the kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus did all of these things, but it's very interesting that he sends these 12 men out and he sends them out in his power and it actually is his representatives. And in the tradition at that time, I read a commentator that said that, look, whenever you, know, you sent out, uh, someone sends out someone like that, that it would be as if that person themselves were the one coming. And so these, these 12 uh, apostles, it was like as if Jesus himself were out healing the diseases and casting out the demons. It'd be like an uh, ambassador now where, uh, you know, a random small country in the middle of nowhere a U.S. ambassador isn't just speaking his or her own opinions, but they're representing the State Department of the United States and therefore the executive um, executive leader, the president of the United States, and really the entire United States as a people. And that's really the force of this, is Jesus sends out these these people to do what he had been doing. He, he commissions them with that kind of authority and responsibility. So what I wanted to look at those two broad categories of the spiritual needs that Jesus would send these people out and then also the physical needs. So you can look at, uh, at verses 7 and 13 and there you'll see uh, there you'll see the uh, the physical needs that Jesus would send his uh, disciples out to uh, address. So verse seven, it says that he uh, he called the twelve and sent them out by authority, uh, sent them out by two by two, and then gave them authority over the unclean spirits. So there's there's that um, these unclean spirits that you could say that that's an element of spiritual need as well. I mean these things are of course going to be related, but it, oftentimes these uh, these unclean spirits would have a lot of terrible effects for the mental and emotional health and and 
and sometimes even the physical health. You can read through some of the gospel accounts and even in the book of Acts, and you'll see the kind of torment that people were, were under with these unclean spirits. Uh, so you have that in verse 7, and then again you'll see in verse 13, they cast out many demons and anointed them, uh, anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. And again, you've got uh, the, the demonic possession element where they are, are sent out, but then you also see just regular, um, you know, regular illnesses and physical problems, and they prayed for people, and many people were healed. So because of this, you can see that Jesus sent his disciples out. These apostles go out, and he cares about the physical elements of what it means to be you and demonic oppression and what that would mean for you and emotional problems and physical problems that that he cared about all these things. And so he and he still does. That uh, I don't know many Christians who uh, who love Jesus and who believe the Bible who don't actively and regularly pray for people to be healed. And it doesn't happen all the time and maybe even most of the time, not a, a complete healing. It, it just t totally depends and it's up to the discretion of God himself, but, uh, but God still heals people. And I bet if we were to have you here today and if I were to say, hey, how many of you, when you have asked God at some time in the past, you've seen some kind of miraculous intervention or perhaps you yourself should not be sitting here, how many of you would say that? And I bet there I bet there'd be quite a few of you in the past when I've asked that question, hands will shoot up all around the room and go, yeah, I shouldn't be here. And yeah, I prayed for someone and then God miraculously intervened. And that's what was happening here. Uh, but it shows us that God cares about the physical part, but then also the spiritual. You can see in verse 12 is probably the, the clearest representation of this. But uh, there it says that, um, that um, they, uh, they, they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And that message of repentance was similar to what I was saying a moment ago, where Jesus had not yet gone to the cross and resurrection, but that's the message. You're going, hey, you need to turn. You need to turn from what you're doing, and God is here. The Messiah is here. And ultimately, that would lead to the cross and the resurrection. But you could, you could see that God cared more um, uh, about the whole person. And, and this is significant because he would care if you're hungry. He fed, by the way, um, people on, on a couple of different occasions. And those are just the ones that are recorded, even a large group of people. People. But here we see his concern for the whole person. Uh, but it's not just the physical, but also the spiritual. Because what happens if you're fed and you're, of course, going to be hungry later today? And is he just going to be putting Band-Aids on? And, and so the spiritual concern that God would have here as Jesus is communicating God's passion and his strong desires for people is that he cares about the whole version of you and isn't just going to put a Band-Aid on your current itch right now that you just feel like needs to be scratched. But, um, but even deeper than that, the deepest core of your being that he came here to meet that. So you should be encouraged by that, that whenever you look at this passage, it should remind you as he sends out these 12 that, uh, that he cares about all of you. And if you wonder if God, does God even notice, does he care? The answer is yes. And so much so that he sent his only son crucified and resurrected. So much so, let's say you're a Christian, uh, I'm sorry, you're not a Christian and you may even have a little bit of, of recoil to this and you're like, man, going out and telling people to believe something, ah, that just rubs me the wrong way. I understand where you're coming from, but look at it this way. Consider the fact that God sent out an army uh, looking for people just like you, and you're watching this right now. Uh, could it be that a friend that invited you to click on this today, that this is God's mean of means for you of putting that friend in your life to say, hey, look, I, wanna, I want you to know the grace that's meant something by me, and I know this preacher isn't much to listen to, but you ought to listen to the message that he's talking about from the Bible, and um, that, that truth there and the reality of God and the grace of Jesus changed my life forever. And so I just want you to know that God cares about you. He loves you and he, he cares about your soul. He cares about what you experience, your emotional life, your physical life, the pain you go through. He cares about all of that. And then another thing that should encourage you, and this will be specifically for Christians and really from here on out the rest of this message, specifically for Christians, is that you know something we say here every Sunday whenever we're done and we're not trying to be cute is we'll read the benediction together and then whoever's leading that service that day will say, Redeemer, you are, you know the answer to that, you are sent. And that, that's what we say, and it's not just trying to be clever, but it's really indicating something important. And you may think, well, man, I'm at home. Like, where am I sent to? Well, first of all, this is a unique season. But secondly, you are still Jesus's sent ones. You have uh, people in your life and you have digital connection with people. And increasingly, we're going to be out and around more and more. And there are people that God has put in your life. And so you are sent out as, as his sent people in the same way that those apostles were a long 
time ago, sent representing Jesus. So I've got three tips for you to consider um, as, we, uh, as we consider this mission that God has given us, and both physical and, um, and spiritual, that God's given all of His people. So um, here's three things. Number one is that um, I think it's really great to, to do ministry together. And we see that here in verse 7 where uh, he says that they were sent out two by two. And I don't think it always has to be together. I think it's more fun together. And whether it is that you're sharing faith with your faith with someone, uh, that I think it's a lot of fun to do that with uh, a friend. Over the years, I've started up Bible studies with Christian friends before, like maybe a couple or two who have joined me and said, hey, look, we, we wanna open this up for some of our non-believing friends or perhaps some of our friends that have not really been in church in a bit. And it's a lot of fun to do that kind of ministry together or even be sharing your faith around town and having a friend with you or perhaps another Christian at your workplace that you're able to include some of your non-believing friends into your circle and into your home and into your life. That that's a beautiful way and also as you do ministry, that uh, I've seen some stuff on social media over the last few weeks of Redeemer members serving at Lubbock Impact. What an awesome thing to, to do that, number one, to go serve at South Plains Food Bank and go do things for our city and community, but, uh, but how about doing that together? What an awesome, um, awesome reality of that Christian community as you serve. So that kind of ministry um, and that kind of mission, doing it together is an awesome way to go about it. Number two um, would be to trust it trust God for provision. And where I'm getting this is in verse eight, check it out. It says in verse eight that, um, that he, he charged them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts and wear sandals and uh, you don't even, don't even bring an extra tunic. You know, don't even wear it, don't have anything extra. Now, this is where you can take a wrong turn when you interpret the Bible and go, okay, well, we need to be biblical. So chacos and, uh, you know, one shirt, I hope it doesn't get cold or, um, you know, man, I hope, is that going to get nasty when I'm not washing it? And, you know, I mean, is planning wrong? Am I not supposed to bring a suitcase? Am I not supposed to plan ahead? Jesus is not making a sweeping perspective here on, on how it is that we should think about the future and do road trips. But what he is saying is something that's really significant that challenged me. And that's that, hey, look, we're going to send you out and you need to trust in God's provision. Trust in God's provision first. I think you can see elsewhere, when you read the rest of the New Testament, Paul will talk about making plans to go make visits and he would need to raise money to go do that. He would need to get on a boat to go do that sometimes and he'd need to you know, have that, the travel coordinated and the logistics coordinated. And so planning is not wrong. You're gonna see that elsewhere in the Bible. But what is a non-negotiable, whether you have extra shirts, whether you've got, uh, whether you've got a suitcase or not, is that we're gonna trust in God first and foremost for our provision and for even the fruitfulness of that ministry. And this challenged me quite a bit because here's some questions that came up to me as I was considering this and thinking about uh, verse 8 was, do I want more? Like when I'm talking about deep core priorities and not going to a weird place with this going, okay, I'm going to sell everything or uh, just dismissing it because this seems so foreign. Do I care more about Jesus being known and needs being met, both in Lubbock and around the world? Do I care more about that on the one hand, Jesus being known and needs being met? Or on the other hand, me having a kind of designer, um, custom, um, you know, happy and comfortable life? Well, which, is, which is more important to me with a high net worth and uh, the personal freedoms and the things that I enjoy the most, being able to do those the most? Which of those is my top priority? And um, I would like to say that it's Jesus and meeting these needs, but deep down I know that uh, there's a little bit of, can I have both, please? Is it possible? And maybe I'm not the only one on that. I, I read something else in a, a book by a guy named Francis Schaefer in the past, uh, past week or two, and it's a collection of some of his sermons, and Schaefer made a huge impact on me, and I may be referencing him for the next few weeks. You may get tired of it, but you know, he, he was talking about if you do the Lord's work in the Lord's way, you should actually expect as you are trying to do ministry for his sake, and, and this would certainly qualify as us as his representatives being sent out um, as an army looking for the lost and the broken and the hurting and the sick and the poor, that um, you know you go do that, but you do it in His strength. You do it in the Lord's way. He said you should expect the difficulty to actually to increase, and that shocked me when I read it because I thought, wait a second. I think the fantasy I live in is if I do the Lord's work, but I do it in the Lord's way, regardless if I'm vocational pastor or if I'm an accountant or anything else, 
uh, that if I do the Lord's work in the Lord's way, we should expect difficulty and even more problems and more brokenness to find its way on our doorstep. So I'm gonna ask the question again, is, is Jesus and his kingdom and meeting needs and Jesus being known the most valuable thing or is the most valuable thing uh, on the other end of that your personal comfort? And at times you may find these things at odds and Jesus says, go and, and trust me and be one of my sent ones. Uh, the third component of this comes up in verses 10 and 11, and that is that we're gonna pursue people. Um, we're gonna pursue people and look for open people um, while we're doing this ministry. And so we're looking for these open people. Look at verses 10 and 11. And it says, um, he said to them, uh, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place if, if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake the dust off that's on your feet as a testimony against them. And this may seem, again, real foreign, and to a certain degree it is, that you know when they went there with nothing, they would need to be put up in homes. And so they're saying, go there, and, um, and then um, and hopefully they're gonna receive you whenever you go there. And, um, and whenever they would stay, if somebody offered you nicer accommodations, this would be the direct meaning that whenever they offer these accommodations to you, that you should not go, you know, kind of get an upgrade, go ahead and stay with, with whatever person elsewhere in scripture, this sometimes is called a person of peace and you should, you should stay there and enjoy that hospitality. But, uh, but there's more to this that, uh, that I think the, the principle here is that um, you need to be looking for people that are open. And uh, it says, look, and if, if they're not, then knock the dust off your feet and move on. And if you're wondering that foreign element of this passage, that um, sometimes Jews, when they would be on road trips, that they would come back and if they were in a particularly pagan area and like a bunch of wild living, they might, you know, kind of prophetically knock the, knock the dust off their sandals as they were turned back uh, to Israel as a statement of going, man, that, is, that was a wild thing and we're God's people and that's not how we um, are to live and, and how, to, how we are to be. And so Jesus, when he tells his uh, apostles this, that in a way it's kind of like that prophetic function of saying, hey, look, the, the dust has knocked off our feet here and we're moving on. And it's not so much forget them and we have nothing to do with them. Like you would certainly continue to be kind and to pray. But the principle here is, is that as we're pursuing people, we're looking for open people and people that are interested. And I've heard it said here at Redeemer from some people before, we're gonna go with the goers. And if somebody's in, we're gonna pray for those who aren't going, but that we're, as far as relational investment, we're gonna go with the goers. And that's the principle that Jesus laid out here. Now, let me tell you how that's worked out for me in a couple of different ways over the years. So one would be college for me. It was a time when I was first awakening to the idea that God might use me as a student with people that were around me. And I had a, uh, there's a guy in class named Tim and um, I began to just felt like God had put him on my heart. And so I really began to intentionally pursue him. And um, you know, we, uh, they picked me up to play softball with them in a tournament and uh, just doing different things with these guys. And then, uh, but I, I was beginning even to share my faith with him. And this was one of the first times I'd really shared my faith and went back when I was in college. And, and I just felt like I was running into a, a bit of a wall with Tim. And, um, and then there's a guy I'd got to know on a team that he played with. And there's a guy named Brent and Brent was pretty crazy. And I, I remember the first time I'd ever really ever noticed him is people would say, oh man, must be game day. Cause Brent's, you know, cussing and ready to go in and you know, was, you know, just all fired up and throwing a glove and all this stuff that may not have happened, but probably did. And, um, and so what's interesting is, is that with all my pressing into Tim and I was praying for him, that one night I got a call from Brent and he wanted to talk and we barely even had a spiritual conversation and he wanted to talk and knew that I was a Christian. And then next thing you know, we start, start having regular spiritual conversation and um, at, not after long, um, he becomes uh, a Christian after another uh, few months of that. And um, you know, even some other things that God had done in his life and a crazy tie-in with now a current period of Redeemer, Brent and Don and their family all attend Redeemer. And uh, a few weeks ago, if you remember Noah, uh, was on a video and talking about how he had began to follow Jesus more recently again. And uh, he mentioned Kirsten. Well, that's Brent and Dawn's daughter, Kirsten, that Noah married. And so what God was doing way back then, like I, I'm such a knucklehead, I was zeroing in on Tim. And I mean, I pray good things for Tim, but the one that the Lord was working on was Brent. And I, I, I just didn't see it. And it's like, in spite of me, in the middle of that, that um, God saves Brent and then now has a believing daughter Daughter that has an impact on bringing Noah back to the Lord and so on and so forth. You just think about the ripples of going with the goers, even when you're not seeing it. I, I've had that happen even again 
and more recently where I was starting a Bible study with, with some of my friends who had not been in church. And I just hadn't even thought of my friend Jason. He calls me and randomly, and I just left lunch inviting a couple of these other guys to this Bible study. He asked me what I was doing with them. I tell him, and he's like, man, I would love to come to that. And then now, one of my best friends and Redeemer member, and we baptized Amber, and we baptized a couple of their kids now, and the Lord has done incredible things. And I was focused on these guys here, and yet the Lord had designs on Jason and Amber and their whole family. And so, look, this is not so much a hero story about me, but the question that I feel challenged on is it's easy to live even in the past about how the Lord has used us in the past, but even now, um, are, we, are we looking and are we open and are we wanting the Lord to use us to meet needs physically and to bring the good news of the grace of Jesus to bear in the people that are around us? I want you to know that God cares about all of you and as you go out, and as I stumble through this sermon, it's as Jesus was speaking it, and, and as you um, stumble through sharing the gospel with your friends, it's as if Jesus were communicating with you. That's what it means to be his representative. And as you are serving food at Lubbock Impact or the South Plains Food Bank, and as you're raising money perhaps to um, help uh, help someone that's in a, a significant bind, and as you are encouraging someone that's just so emotionally broken, it's as if Jesus were feeding the person. It's as if, it's as if um, Jesus were the one encouraging the person who's broken and really struggling emotionally. And, and as you're offering some encouragement to someone that has a terminal diagnosis, it's as if Jesus himself were offering that encouragement. And so I want you to know, you are not on your own. You come with the authority and the power and the presence of God to meet both physical and spiritual needs. And if you ever wonder, even if personally, if God cares about you, Jesus coming to this earth should be um, exhibit A. Exhibit B should be that he sends an army out to meet physical and spiritual needs. And he cares about you and he wants so badly for both physical needs and emotional needs for those to be met in Christ and for the deepest part of your being, the spiritual part of you, uh, to find its completion by believing in Jesus' death and resurrection. So um, I want us to respond to the Lord in this and we're going to sing together. We're also going to take, uh, take communion if you have anything that can approximate Jesus' uh, body and his blood. These elements represent it and here we would use juice and, and bread. If you're a follower of Christ, I want to invite you to, uh, to take if you're not a Christian but would like to talk about this, then you, you wouldn't want to talk, wouldn't want to take the elements today, uh, but would love for you to consider these truths and uh, reach out to one of us about what it would mean to follow Jesus. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to continue to worship and, uh, and take the elements in your home. So Lord, would you, uh, would you let us feel your care and concern for us, your love for us as your people, and that you would... Um, you know, those days that we just don't feel like that you would even care about all of us, that we would sense that and even people coming into your kingdom by believing in you. Lord, let us be your sent ones that go out and preach the good news and um, also who are um, looking to meet needs through our vocation and through um, serving in any way that we can. In Jesus' name, amen. We are marked by what Christ has done our lives and into our deaths. Our lives are held by Him. Let's believe this about His blood, about what He's done. Sing together. That Your blood is healing every wound. Your blood is making all things new. Your blood speaks a better word. Your blood. Your blood. It's the measure of my worth. Your blood. It's more than I deserve. Your blood. Speaks a better word. down the lines Oh, it echoes through the night The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Oh, speaks a better word Your blood Oh, righteousness Your blood Hold my defense
God, we come before you and um, just so grateful for who you are. That God, you care for all of us. You care for our needs. That you care for us spiritually. Um, that God, you are a good father who knows what we need and you provide for that. And God, you are a good father that though we were enemies of you, though we were separated from you, you sent your own son um, to come and reconcile us back to you. And as a result, God, that those of us that have believed in you, God, thank you that you've sent us out um, to draw others to yourself and that you um, are using us. And so, God, give us boldness, not in our own ability, but give us boldness and a dependence on you and your ability to advance your kingdom through us. God, what an opportunity. Bring people to mind. Give us a heart um, and a desire to make your name known and to share the gospel. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So each and every week in our services, this is our giving moment where we give financially to the Lord in response to what he has given us. That Dusty talked about this, that God cares for the whole person. And so what we have uh, physically, each and everything that we have has been given to us from God. And even more than that, God has generously given his one and only son, Jesus, so that we can have a relationship with him. And so we give in response to everything God has given to us. And it's an act of worship and an act of response for what God has given us. And so we have a few ways that you can do this. You can give on our website at redeemerlubbock.org give, or if you have the Redeemer app, you can give there. And we're so grateful for your generosity. So I have just one announcement for you, and it's Redeemer's reopening plan. That right now we are targeting June 14th to be able to worship together in person. Now at that time, we will still be streaming services online, and we will have three different service times, 8 o'clock, 9.30, and 11. If you have any questions about what that's going to look like or if you just want to reach out to someone, you can email info at RedeemerLubbock.org and we'd love to answer your question. Or you can go to RedeemerLubbock.org where we have kind of detailed out what we, are try- what we are hoping to do and what we're praying to do to be able to safely worship together again. And we are excited about this. We are anticipating um, getting to gather together as a body of believers, worshiping our Savior King, Jesus. And so again, we're targeting June 14th with three new service times, 8, 9.30, and 11. And you can find out all that information at www.redeemerlubbock.org. And so as we wrap up each and every week, we read the benediction out loud together. And so it comes from Titus 3 in Psalm 36. And I want you to read this together out loud with me, even in your homes. And it says this, Lord Jesus, Give me faith to accept your kindness, not on the basis of anything in me, but because you love to be kind. Help me as I reject my false assumptions about you to live as one wholly loved. Redeemer, you are sent.